Hello crafty friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Laura of Crafty Not Shifty. I'm super excited for today's video because it is all about shaker cards and some tips and tricks for creating them. And it is part of a video collaboration with Justine Hovey. So if you haven't already seen her video, there'll be a link in the description below. And if you're hopping over from her channel, then welcome. It is very nice to have you here. I hope you enjoy this video. Justine is collaborating all month long with different YouTubers, bringing you some really great card making content. So do make sure you check out all of the videos across this month and you never know, you might just find your new next favorite YouTube creator. So for this first card, I wanted to share with you my hack for working with a curved or round shaker window. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult to work with your foam tape when you've got to kind of bend around a curve. So I'll go ahead and share that with you in just a moment. For this very first card, I did want to include kind of the full process of creating the shaker card, just in case it's a new concept to you or you wanted a refresher. So I went ahead and die cut a whole bunch of circles using some doodlebug patterned paper and I also cut a circle out of this front panel here and I'm going to go ahead and decorate that. Behind my circle window I added some double sided sticky tape and kind of sealed that off with acetate so we'll have a nice clear section for our sequins to sit inside of the shaker and that will allow us to see through to all of those lovely shaker elements without anything falling out. If you're interested in any of the products that I'm using in today's video, I'll try and include links to them all in the description below, so you can go ahead and check those out, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask me those in the comment section. So I'm gonna add some tape onto this sentiment strip here. I think this is just perfect for this card. It's so bright and colorful. And then when we add the sequins in, we've got that interactive element. So I wanted to keep the sentiment quite simple, and this banner strip works perfectly. And I just cut this down from the Doodlebug patterned papers and then I'm going to go ahead and give it kind of a faux matte just using some of these mirror, uh, purple mirror peel offs from Love From Lizzie. And then we're ready to get right into the hack. So hack number one, I'm going to grab my foam, I'm going to fold it in half so I've got that extra height and dimension which is going to make it a little bit easier for my sequins to move around. And then because this is so wide, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down the center. You can get narrower foam tape and you can get strips as well, but the scissors will work just as well. You can go ahead and cut that straight down the middle and get two smaller pieces. So here's where the magic comes in. I've peeled the front and back off of this uh, foam and that makes it so easy to manipulate around this circle. Look how easy that is to go ahead and stick down. It would have been Gosh, I don't even know how many tiny pieces of foam had I have left the backing on the back because I wouldn't have been able to bend it at all. So I would have had to have cut a ton of pieces to kind of work my way around that curve. So once I'm happy with the circle, I've covered the back of my card with double layers of foam tape. And that's just to make sure we've got nice even dimension. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some sequins. I'll have a link in the description below to this mix if it's still available. I have had this for quite some time, but it is a beautiful purple mix from Pretty Pink Posh. And then I'll go ahead and place my panel down onto the card, making sure to add a little bit of extra pressure all around the outside of our circle window so none of those sequins come flying out the sides. And that is it for card number one. So you can't finish a shaker card without giving it a good shake. <laughs> <laughs> and just making sure everything's exactly as it should be. So for card number two, this is my lazy girl hack. It's a valid hack. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time to make a card and you want it to have some extra wow factor. That's when the lazy girl hacks come in handy. So I've grabbed some patterned paper and trimmed it down to a panel. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this onto a white card base to keep everything pretty clean and simple. And then I'm actually gonna use a pre-made shaker. Yes, that is a thing that you can buy. You can find pre-made shaker stickers and it takes all of the work out of a shaker card because all you need to do is peel and stick. So I'll go ahead and finish up decorating this card. Again, just using some more peel-offs for that kind of faux matting effect where I've got my two different uh, papers, the card base and the patterned paper. I'll trim off any of that excess and then grab my sentiment. 
And everything that I'm using here is actually leftovers from one of my Love From Lizzie card kits. And I'll pop down the sentiment here and then grab my pre-made shaker. So this one is in the shape of a little fairy, um, fairy dust bottle. I almost said fairy tail, that's not right. Fairy dust bottle. And I'll go ahead and stick that down and that is the easiest shaker card you will ever make. So don't worry if you're after something a little bit more complicated, we've got some really fun ones coming up including a liquid shaker card. Okay, so hack three is using your die cuts as your shaker element and creating a full panel shaker card. So I've got this leafy tree background die from Lawn Fawn and I'm running that through my mini die cut machine a couple times to get all my different leaves. I've already gone ahead and assembled my frame with the tree and then kind of the, um, the orange in the background for the autumnal feeling tree. Probably a strange choice of colors given that it is spring at the moment, but it felt right in the moment and um, this was kind of what I ended up with. So I'm using some brown cardstock for the base and a patterned ombre paper for behind the tree. I've gone ahead and added double sided sticky tape all over the back of this die cut frame and then I'll add some more acetate just pressing down firmly to make sure everything is stuck in place. Any gaps in your glue or your foam are your worst enemy for shaker cards. So another hack for a full sized shaker card is I like to mitre the corners. So you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting little angles onto each of these pieces and then I can butt them right up against each other. So when you grab the card and you look at it from the side, which I don't know if you've ever given a shaker card to someone, but in my experience, the first thing they do is try and figure out how it works and look at it from the side. And this way you've got really nice edges. Your foam tape kind of joins seamlessly and you've got those two triangle points meeting rather than having any harsh edges. So once I've covered everything with my foam, I went ahead and added some of those leaves onto the background. I kind of stuck them in the background to give it a little bit more interest and it will also help to catch some of those leaves as everything's shaking. I was a little bit enthusiastic with my glue so I went ahead and kind of mopped up any of the excess with my finger and then just added a little bit of anti-static to kind of neutralize any of the stick from the glue that had oozed out the sides. And I also added some of those leaves onto the front of my leaf panel. So once I have everything firmly stuck in place, it is ready for its test shake. As I mentioned, you can't make a shaker card without giving it a good shake, partly because it's fun and partly to check if you've got any errors or areas where anything's going to come flying out the side. And to finish this off, I grabbed a thank you die from Simon Says Stamp and I'll run that through my die cut machine and I went ahead and added some double sided sticky tape, some sticker adhesive onto the back of this cardstock before I die cut it. So it would make it really easy to stick down with it being such a small fiddly piece. And I'll just go ahead and press that firmly in place and this card is finished. Okay, for our next hack, I wanted to show how you can use a stamp storage sleeve to create a custom shaker, and this is actually gonna be a tag. So I went ahead and grabbed some patterned paper, ran it through my die cut machine, and created the outline of the tag. I love this piece, it's got such nice colors in it, and the message is really beautiful, and I think it makes such a pretty tag. So I've gone ahead and popped that inside of a stamp storage pocket and I've allowed my fuse tool to get good and hot and I'm going to go ahead and run that along the edge of my die. So instead of using the ruler that comes with the fuse tool, I decided to use the edge of the die so I could get this exact to the shape of the paper that we've die cut. And you can do this with kind of cookie cutters or anything that you have that is metal that will allow you to run the fuse tool along the edges. And I'm working on a silicone mat. I found that that tends to be best when working with the fuse tool. It will melt your craft mat if you try and use it. So be warned. <laughs> So then I'm going to grab a spoonful of sequins, these ones are from Hero Arts, this is one of their ombre mixes, and just add a couple spoonfuls inside of this tag. I left the top part open so I could um, add all of the goodies inside to allow it to shake around, and I also wanted to add some silver glitter to this piece. 
So once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'll go ahead and grab that tag die again and hold it in place while I seal off the top. You'll notice that after I've sealed these sections, I am using my scissors to trim off the excess. There is an attachment to the fuse tool that will cut through the plastic, but I decided just to use the sealer for this one. Okay, for the final hack in my video, I'm going to show how you can create a water shaker card. First up, I'm going to stamp my sentiment on my front panel, and then I will die cut this rectangle that will act as my fish tank. I went ahead and stamped and coloured some beautiful little fish, these are so cute, and they will be kind of the decoration within the fish tank. I've grabbed a smaller storage pocket, you could use the same size that I used earlier, but I have them in a couple different sizes, to, so to save on waste I'm using the smaller size for this piece, and you can see I've grabbed the ruler that comes with the fuse tool for this one. Now I am using the fuse tool to seal off my plastic uh, holder for my liquid. You definitely don't need the fuse tool to make this. You can use a small sandwich baggie and fill that up with the liquid and then snap it shut, but obviously you are then restricted to the size that you can find sandwich bags in. So you'll notice that I'm actually sealing this several times because I'm working with liquid. I wanted to be really careful to make sure that nothing comes out the sides whatsoever. So I'm actually moving the fuse tool uh, ruler ever so slightly after I've done one line of sealing and I'm just adding another line before I trim away the excess just to make sure that there's no risk of anything escaping. And then I'll trim it down roughly to size and add my liquid. So rather than just going ahead and adding some water, which would be kind of super liquidy, I guess, <laughs> um, I'm actually using hand sanitizer. And this one has a slight tint to it. And it also has some little like pearls inside, which are kind of moisturizing. It's really nice when you use it as hand sanitizer. But I think it works really well as decoration for the fish tank. And then I also added some clear sparkling sequins. So I'll go ahead and seal off the end. Now at this point it would have made a lot of sense to make sure that I didn't make this piece any bigger than the, uh, the width of my card, but I didn't think to do that so you'll see that I make a small correction before the end of the video. But essentially you want to go ahead and seal off the excess. And you can see when I'm giving you a squeeze here, nothing's coming out the sides, nothing's leaking, so it really is quite robust and um, you shouldn't have any problems with anything leaking out. So I added double sided adhesive onto the back of my fish tank window and I'll go ahead and stick down my little water pouch with those decorative sequins inside and this is when I'm realizing it hangs over the edge of my card panel. So I had to go ahead and resize it using my fuse tool and you'll notice because I cut where there was already liquid inside, the edge of my card did get a little bit wet. It's unfortunate, it's not because anything leaked, it's just because I had to go ahead and trim away the excess. To give some nice even dimension across the back, I'm adding some more of my trusty 3M foam tape. And then I'll go ahead and add some tape onto the back of my fish tank. And I'll just hold this in place to kind of line everything up so I can stick it down on this ombre pattern paper so everything sits just right. And I love how this looks. It is definitely addictive. You just want to kind of poke it and play with it and move the sequins around. I think I'm going to have to make a couple more of these. It is a lot of fun. I did go ahead and add some more peel-offs as a decorative element and you'll see that at the end. For some reason I don't seem to have the footage of me doing that, but you will see what I mean when you see the, uh, the shots at the end of this video. So I'll go ahead and stick that all down onto a card base and the liquid shaker is finished. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll show a quick recap of each of the cards on screen right now. As I mentioned, this is part of a video collaboration with Justine Hovey, so do make sure you check out her video. If you're new here from her video, thank you for sticking around to the end. If you're not already subscribed, then go ahead and tap the subscribe icon, and if you want to, you can also press the bell for notifications whenever I post. That's all from me today, I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now!